I am a pediatric nutritionist and a feeding expert for children, especially those children who are not the best eaters or not optimally growing. And I'm also a health and a happiness coach for moms because we all know motherhood is uh, not the easiest thing. So anyhow, today's topic, we are talking about um, things that parents should not do. So we worry a lot about our children's nutrition and their eating. And sometimes we worry so much that we actually do a disservice to ourselves. Um, hi everyone. Welcome. I love the hearts. I really appreciate it. Uh, so there are three things that if you have children at home that you should not say, and I can pretty much guarantee that, uh, yes, mom power, um, that most of us have said these things. So let's start with number one. Um, never use the if then statement. So have you ever said something like, if you eat your broccoli, then you can have some dessert or if you have finished your meal, then we can watch TV. So sounds like a very, you know, a harmless thing to say, but it actually has, um, it has an alternative effect. So what happens is if we tell them you can, if you eat your broccoli, then you can have dessert, then broccoli doesn't seem very desirable, but dessert sounds really awesome. Cause if I can only have my dessert, if I eat, um, if you eat my broccoli and chicken, then broccoli and chicken must not be very good, but the ice cream at the end of the meal must be something that I want to have. So you actually make the then part of the statement more desirable and um, the if part of the statement less interesting because we're making them eat it. The, the other thing is that um, you want to, you want these foods, you don't want desserts and things like that to be uh, something that they want more yeah, than the good stuff. and one thing I would suggest is actually introducing desserts as part of the meal. So they actually don't become this forbidden food that they can never have. So if you introduce a cookie every once in a while, it doesn't have to be a bad cookie. It can be a good cookie um, with their meal. It's like, well, Hey, this must not be something that I need and want to have all that often. Okay. So number two, so the first is if then statement. So never um, say, if you do this, then you can have that. The, <laughs> thank you so much. Live and low carb man. Thank you for the support. And uh, thanks for the hearts. So number two, I can guarantee these three words you've spoken. If you have children, you probably said them today. They are one more bite. So again, seems harmless. But when we say um, one more bite, we're actually undermining our children's appetite, their own. They are the best regulators of appetite. They know how much they need precisely and what they need. So if they're eating a lot of carbs one day or a lot of protein another day, it's because they actually need them. And parents, well-meaning parents, including myself, we, we jump in sometimes because we, we don't think that they're eating enough or eating um, as best as we think that they could. So then we say, have one more bite of um, your carrots or have one more bite of, of this. And by doing that, we're saying, you might be full right now, but I don't care, so keep eating. And what that does over the long term, it's, it, it, um, it doesn't give them permission to listen to their bodies. So I know we're all doing these things because we think it's the best thing for our kids and we love them and want them to eat well, but believe it or not, they are way better at us at regulating their food. And I can tell you that because I, um, I just wrote a blog post on how I need to finish every meal because I've always, um, cause I don't know how to listen to my appetite sometimes. And I just want to keep eating, but kids are, are, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Open your mouth for the train. Yes, we, we do that. You know, as long as kids, you know your child best. So if your child is willing to try different foods, it's okay, especially for an older child to say, you know what, have a bite of everything on your plate or encourage them to, but don't force them. And that's a whole other topic that we'll get into another time. Okay, so one more bite. Um, not recommended. It's something you can say, but be careful when you use it. The third is, it's a question. So again, something that we would never think would be um, a dangerous thing to say to kids or, or counterproductive thing to say. But if you ask them tonight to say, if you say to them, um, Charlie, what would you like for dinner? Or if you say, what would you like for lunch? Or what would you like for breakfast? What's that, what that is doing is um, the intent is good because you're giving them choice and they want control, especially at the younger age. But what that's doing is it's putting a lot of pressure on them because, well, we know one thing, they will probably give us the same answer. They will say goldfish or they will say pasta or pizza, the things that they love. Um, and then what that does, it gets us into a rut of what about making them finish their food at the next mealtime when they are currently full. Um, you don't never make them. I guess part of the point is 
you don't you don't want to force them to do anything. So if they don't finish it at one meal, then you can offer it up. But kids love variety, just like we do. We don't want to eat the same meal for every single meal or snack, right? So variety is key. So by by um, asking them what they want, they'll often answer what we don't want them to, what we would expect. So those typical foods, and then they have a precise way of they prob the way they want it to be prepared. So we go out of our way because we love our children to make them that pasta. Yes, variety is key. And then they sit down at the table and they decide, you know what? I actually don't want this pasta or with this sauce or the way you made it. Kids are fickle. So you need to, um, you need to, as a parent, you decide what goes on your child's plate and then they decide how much they want to eat and what they want to eat. So, um, you can give them choice in other ways, ask them what plate they would like to use or what kind of music they want to listen to. So the, so the, the question is a, is a good thing. It just use the question in the right way. Yes, we are very fickle. <laughs> I can agree with that. So those are the three things. And this is, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a holistic nutritionist, um, pediatric nutritionist. I work with, uh, with small children and, and moms and I'm a feeding expert. I actually have a picky eater protocol online program that is launching January 28th. You can save $100. Um, the early bird ends in three days. So if you're interested and you have small children who are not the best eaters and you're worried that they're not getting the best nutrition, um, please check out daniellebins.com and, uh, and you'll find um, the banner there so you can register. So if there's any questions, feel free to reach out to me or check out my blog. I'm constantly writing about um, how to feed our children so that they have the best relationship and uh, with food as, as adults as well. DanielleBins.com. Thank you very much, Living Low Carb Man. You are my hero today. All right. And thank you for all the hearts. I hope everyone has a great day. And remember, no if then statement, no one more bite rule and no question. Add butter to any food. Yes, they will, including myself, um, and coconut oil actually, but that's a whole other topic. Oh, hi, Jimmy. Okay. Thanks for introducing yourself. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Bye everyone. Time to go pick up my kids. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.